the money. Hmm. <laughs> she said that her top one's highlight will be uh, uh, Mr. Odi- Dr. Odiambo too. So if she could drag on, but yeah, what stood out for me was the editing class. Okay, well done, well done, Eunice. I'm very happy to see you fresh from Kakamega. I see the... Yes, you can, <laughs> that's from Nairobi, you can see the green. Yes, huh? yes. <laughs> okay. okay. May, may I thank you very much, um, uh, Akini, for that. May I just hear from one more, one more, just a highlight of the class. Can I speak, please? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ben Edward. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, please. <laughs> good morning, Edward. Well, thank you so much. In fact, uh, before the class, I was not an English writer. I really fear writing in English. <laughs> yes, but I've learned a lot. Now I can write in both English and Swahili. I can translate my work. And that's amazing. That's what I really wanted. And I'm pretty sure, even you can hear from the way I'm speaking, I'm better, yeah? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be a better writer in future. Thank you so much, Writer Skill Kenya. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Edward. Huh? So um, um, my remarks is nothing out of what we have had during this class or um, in other areas of Writers Guild. First, we told you when you were coming in that this course was not meant to make you a writer overnight, but it was just meant to introduce you to, um, to what you need to do or what you need to keep doing to grow as a writer. So it is by no means, a, it is not a coincidence that when we are graduating for us, we are starting off. We are not graduating and um, finishing our studies. We are starting off our studies or we are starting off our journey. So that is the uniqueness of this course. So for us, we are not done. We are not done and dusted. We are just starting. That's why your, your certificates are written, certificate of growth, not certificate of accomplishment. Yeah. So I, be, I hope you always remember that the, all the things that we learned in the class we have a chance to implement them throughout our writing journey. So that is the wish of this course. And my last wish and remark for you is that when you go out there, I, you probably have interacted with many books as I have. I have interacted with many books and many authors. Um, some, I know their publishing journey for some, I admire them, so I buy books. Or some invite me to their book launches and I buy books. So I've interacted with very many authors. I always ask myself a question. Every other time, someone tells me I want to write. To what end? Yeah. Would it, uh, yeah. If, if it is, let's say, if you are writing to make sales, to make money, and there are other better ways of making money, even quicker than writing. So, um, or even if you are if you are writing just just for the sake, um, let's say to pass time. Well, what I'm what I'm driving to is, I am always of this idea that we should use writing as a tool of service, or writing, or reading as a as something to help us uh, grow in what we are doing. So we can use writing as a tool, something, a ladder. So let's say you are, we are just sharing with Mr. Sam Jim, who is our guest today. One time I visited him in his office. I was just sharing how, let's say you are, you are an entrepreneur and you've written something about your company or about the journey of your company. It will help you it will help your employees to understand you better or to understand the philosophy of the company better. So to that end, we use writing for some end. And most of all, uh, may we always write for good. Eh? Writers Guild has this um, tagline that growing writers for good. So for good on one end means for life or forever. And for good is so that these writers can do good in their writing. So 
I always, every other time I write something, I look at it again and say, how will it have impact the person who is going to read it? How will it, um, what impression will it leave on the other person? How am I portraying my character? So may we all go out there as we strive to write, as we strive to put the things that we have learned in practice, may we all um, write for good. Whichever way, whichever area, try to bring in some information. I'm always in, inspired when I see, uh, let's say on TV, a story has been featured by a journalist. Let's say a story of someone who was arrested and jailed, misjailed, eh, or mis, uh, someone who is jailed by mistake. Then the story is featured by a journalist, then the person is released. Now, that is journalism for good. Yeah, you are journalism to seek justice. Now, I'm imagining also very many other things we can do. Let's say uh, you've written about a specific situation. Let's say David, for instance, write about a specific something in uh, public health. Then that thing informs decisions and helps some people, writing for good. One of us, a previous graduate of this course, wrote about a specific drug, a, a new drug that was coming out in Marsabit. Um, and then when he wrote about it, then the media picked it, discussed it, and then it became a whole national issue. Until now, there is a legislation on that. May we write for good. Um, whichever area we pick, even if it is telling our own stories, may we try to write for good. And with that, I wish you all the best in your writing journey and make another, make the promise that we have made all along, that Writers Guild will hold you. We'll do our best to hold your hands. What we're asking of you is we, we carry the burden of writing or of reading or of writers in Kenya together. So we ask you also to share in this by guiding your mentee, by reaching out to us or by sharing ideas always with us, what we can do to support. So for Writers Guild, we are here for you, totally, and always, for good. <laughs> for good meaning for a lifetime. So we, we wish you all the best. And I wish you all the best in your writing journey. We will work together. So thank you so much. May we all write for good. Thank you so much, Gabriel, uh, for a wonderful starting point. And, um, encouraging us and the writers who are graduating today. So um, I can see we don't have our mentors and our facilitators around, or our trustees. And um, even Gabriel, you're a trustee, but I won't allow you to talk again. So we'll wait until they come. So for now, we'll go straight to the, the ones graduating. You, the guests, and uh, I'm going to pick from no particular order. I'll start with uh, Jocelyn because you are the first one on my screen. So Jocelyn, please be ready with your speech. And then uh, the person you invited will talk after you're done talking. Uh, we can all also, after uh, one person has spoken, we can all unmute and just clap for them or show our videos and clap for them because they've come this far and they're going so far. So they need us, they need us. So after Jocelyn, it will be Edward. So in that order, Jocelyn, then Edward, you'll follow. So welcome, Jocelyn. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Okay, my name is Jocelyn Amkambwa. Um, I honor the opportunity uh, to speak. I'll start, start by saluting uh, Gabriel Linda, uh, uh, Patricia Molly, and the rest in the, in the team and my my fellow classmates in the in the write your passion program 
and I, in here, I have invited uh, my colleague, uh, John Robert Ooko. I've also invited uh, my sister who will be joining in, Shamela Mkambwa. Mm -hmm. I also have uh, one of my mentor who will be joining me from Ghana, Rose Mafo. So I'll, I'll speak this even in the absentia. Uh, first and foremost, I'll, I'll start by thanking uh, the organizers for the initiative uh, <laughs> to bring this to happen. Uh, for the five weeks, it's been a great uh, learning opportunity and interacting. I've interacted with uh, people who are advanced in the line of writing. I've also uh, learned from people who are deep and very well experienced in the in the line of writing. And even as as I honor this day in graduation, I would like to say thank you for that. Uh, the sessions have been diverse and authentic. Uh, the session on uh, uh, who, who you represent in the writing, that is the, the ethical writing. The session on editing, and also the session on publishing uh, among the other sessions that we had and the practice after that, uh, the, especially this part I'll echo Patricia in, the, the strictness in ensuring that we, we deliver, we deliver according to the uh, instructions that was very great of you. So uh, I've I've moved out of this class with more with more potential and with more insights. I can say every every Saturday, every Saturday of our session used to awaken a different me, used to awaken someone else in me that wasn't there before. Every time. I, I entered the class uh, after 12, I, I got inspired to write even more. Uh, that uh, saw my dream to publishing a book even to reality. I had a discussion with Patricia and Patricia, I, I was telling Patricia, now I have, it's a manuscript, I have it, uh, it is a memoir and so uh, the, the challenge in completing it is uh, every day I face new opportunities, new experiences, new people who touch my life in a special way, and I feel they are inclusive in the, in the book. So I was asking Patricia, uh, this can be a challenge because that book, I can never see it to the end because things are happening, new experiences, new ideas, and now joining Writers Guild has brought, broadened even my mind more than she tells me. Now, Jocelyn, even if a book has to be a hundred copies, it will be a book. It doesn't need to be 790 pages. Even a uh, hundred pages, 200 pages, just on work on, on it like a series. So. It was a very great moment. Um, we spent we spent more more we, we could spend more after class to just discuss, and uh, I was always uh, willing to to draw from this fountain from this fountain of knowledge. So from the time um, Robert introduced me to Writers Guild. Uh, it was during the COVID pandemic and we had so much of a lot of time just spent on our own. So I, I devoured the opportunity. I like to appreciate Patricia because I first, I first uh, met her in a webinar, in a webinar that was being contacted with one of the people in a Writers Guild. So from there, I, it's when I first knew Patricia Molly. Uh, so 
we we interacted and she introduced me to the first to the first uh, to uh, the fifth cohort of writing but uh with the circumstances i wouldn't manage but then i promised her uh, whenever i get another opportunity i won't let it pass so when this opportunity presented itself oh i wish you saw my uh, the gratitude uh, at heart or uh, in most cases gratitude is immat immaterial like we can't present it like something we can hold or something we can see in most cases gratitude is something that is actually not seen unless it is presented verbally or by acts of gratitude so i am very grateful i've been i've been given um an accountability partner uh, who is here uh, i would like to say that i i want to take you all to be my accountability partners uh, because i think one is enough but uh, together i i get my energy from interacting with uh, many so i want to take you all to be my accountability partners uh, from time to time i will pop in with a question uh i think i i think already lukosi uh is is on top because we are we are pushing each other towards writing more i i assign him he assigns me and we are guiding each other through the process we already began we can't wait to begin later so um appreciating the the opportunity by writers guild and even as we graduate today i look forward to more growth more interaction physical interactions uh with the rest of the team here uh this is just a moment to thank everyone who has made it happen asante sana Thank you, Jocelyn. Welcome. Sorry, Patricia, you are muted. Please unmute. <laughs> Sorry. Well done, Jocelyn. Sorry about that. Uh, that was a wonderful speech. And thank you for taking us through your journey. And we hope to see more from you. Uh, is your relative around or one of your, ment uh, your mentors? Uh, you can give the opportunity to say something. Um, my relative is not yet in, but mm -hmm. uh, okay. maybe we can give uh, John Robert Oko a chance to speak, and and then the rest can unfold later. All right, uh, John Robert, if you can hear me, please unmute and say something. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, you know I'm 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 black, and then my background is also dark. So <laughs> you will struggle to see. Me. I hope you are seeing my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy. Thank you, Jocelyn. Congratulations. And congratulations to, to all graduates uh, of this program. Uh, thank you, Writers Guild. Uh, Gabriel Dinda has been a friend of mine for a long time, uh, since when we were in campus, uh, when, when the whole idea of Writers Guild uh, came up. Um, and I remember we we, you know, attended a few of their programs, you know, when we were still uh, students. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that this is unfolding and that uh, it's able to change lives. I know other friends of ours, like, uh, you know, the other time we were with Gabriel, we were talking of uh, a group of, of friends, you know, there's a gentleman called Brian Yagol, who is also doing well in, in, an, in another space. So, um, Gabriel, I think Writers Guild is doing a, an amazing job. 
uh, at first I thought I was going to emerge as uh, one of uh, uh, the writers to be trained here, but then I realized uh, this thing could, sometimes it's not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I I took it upon myself to uh, you know introduce those who are passionate about writing. Well, I'm, I I don't think I'm passionate about uh, writing, but I read not so much though. <laughs> but uh, you know I I took it upon myself. There are a few others I'm trying to bring on board, but then um, the aim is um, <laughs> you know. Uh, as many as possible who are passionate uh, about writing to give to be given the opportunity and to be able to to do what they do best so congratulations uh team thank you writers guild let's look forward for bigger things thank you thank you so much uh, 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 john Oko. Uh, and uh, i hope, uh, I hope uh, you said you're not passionate about, about writing but uh, I do hope um, you write your story. We we'll get to read your story one day because we have to write our own stories. Um, the next person uh, is Edward Omboi. Uh, welcome. And once you're done, you can also invite your guests to talk. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, my name is Seda Jomboi. I am 19 years old. I turned 19 five months ago. I was born in Kisi, but raised in, in Nairobi and Mombasa. Well, my story, well, my speech uh, kind of made it, uh, you know, I can say it, I'm a, I'm a living story, in short. I'm a living story. Why am I saying I'm a living story? It's because See, I'm a, I was uh, at the age of 10, my parents passed away. And so my, my father from a road accident and my mom strangulated. So I had nobody. So an orphanage came and took me in. I have been an, in an orphanage. And I'm happy because I have grown, I've become a writer. And now I am a student at Technical University of Mombasa. So as I said earlier, I am a writer and I am a poet. Some of my friends have been featured in the Taifa Leo newspaper and, uh, and some blogs. And my first book, an anthology of Swahili poetry, is to be out very, very, very soon. In fact, maybe in two weeks time, I think so. So I think that I'm a living story. And uh, as, as uh, the, famous, uh, the, the famous Maratona says, no man is limited. This is something like that. So I want to thank, you know, Gabriel Dinda, plus the facilitators, mentors, and the teachers, and the writers with Kenya Shield. But they have all been my great support and the source of inspiration and direction. And my character of all of you, personality, self image has been built by them. And you have transformed my life and communicated so much hope, love, and purpose in my life. Gabriela, you are such a good man, always caring about others. In a number of ways, you have also made me feel so special. You know, and uh, but as me, Kenya, and you've been the director, has given me length of space to become a better writer. And for that, I must say that you are the most magnificent judge, a mentor, a handsome man, smart, devoted, funny, caring, and always joyful. And let me say this to my favorite writers as well, but this is our time as writers a time of contributing to ourselves and a time of, uh, of speaking out our stories. Well, today I am honored and I am inviting both young and upcoming writers to continue to explore, confront, and question the realities of Africa through their stories, through their work, to Africa to have rightful place in the world. Once again, 
a dream to be an established writer in future, write novels to be filmed, short stories and plays to be acted, and also dream to be shortlisted for the Nobel, for the Nobel Peace Prize. For being an excellent poet, you know, novelist and short story writer. I've invited a lot, a lot of people, but unfortunately, they, they could not make it. So, but they, they're really happy that I've progressed. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really happy for that. And once again, I want to say thank you. I don't have much to say. I'm always the quiet guy. But when it comes to writing, I'm such a terrible man. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think we, we have to clap for everybody who finishes their speech. Uh, thank you so much, Edward, for sharing your story with us. And I hope from here you'll also share with other people and um, grow with other people together and uh, teach them also what you've learned here. It's good also to share the knowledge. So we wish you all the best and well done. Uh, the next person will be Njeri, and then we'll be followed by Akini, we'll be followed by Nuri. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm hearing some... Okay, I was hearing some background noise, but it stopped. Okay. Um... So I've written a little speech here. I'll just read it to you all. Um, this has really been a special experience and um, I'm, I'm just so happy that I could share it with every single one of you. So I'll, I shall begin my speech. Um, oh, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Njeri and um, I've been in Kenya for about a year now. So, yes. Back in pre-COVID times, a dear friend of mine whom I met at Kenya Writers Guild took me to Karura Forest. That day we walked 13 miles together, talking about our family, our beliefs, our experiences, almost everything. I was both grateful and exhausted when I got home. Now, fast forward to last week. I am in a fancy smancy restaurant with two friends. As I look out the window absentmindedly, cramming a fried onion ring into my mouth, I don't even notice the lovely sky view. All I can think of is how we have paid 400 shillings for a small bowl of onion rings. I could have gotten two jump ropes in CBD or 12 pairs of socks from the woman on Tom and Boya Street yelling, Tatu Mia, Tatu Mia, Tatu Mia. So how's Kipchoge, one of my friends says. I look at her completely lost. The famous runner? No, the guy who took you to Karura. He was Kalenjin, right? Oh, yeah, he's fine, I said. How did you guys get there? On Matatu. What? They both said in unison, then busted out laughing. You been, he didn't even have the decency to take you with Uber? <laughs> Me, I love Matatus. I actually prefer them, I said. Me, I, I thought to myself. Wow, I was really starting to talk like a Kenyan. And besides, he paid for my ride all 100 shillings, and he even offered to pay for my ride back, but I didn't want to take advantage of him, I added. It is true though, I love matatus. I love cozy, warm spaces. To me, being sandwiched between many bodies squeezed in a matatu in the middle of traffic on Waiaki Way is much more comfortable than being in the back of an Uber of a rude driver who likes to keep the windows rolled down. It is perhaps also a reflection of my writing process. I am a subconscious writer, meaning I like writing in my head as I am doing other activities not related to writing. I even composed this, this speech as I went running this morning. For me, it is much more inspiring for my writing to observe the cadence of someone talking on the phone um, in matatu or bus, or how the matatu driver keeps a straight face as he breaks driving laws left and right. And boom, I have a character. Perhaps it is a good thing that most of you keep your cameras off during our writers' meetings. After observing your hand gestures and facial expressions, you would, you would have for sure become a character in one of my short stories. Each and every one of you have left an indelible imprint on my heart. 
Dinda's encouraging and warm countenance whenever he gives feedback, or Mr. Tom Adhiambo's uncensored feedback and theories on writing as Mashakura, and the debate with Harriet about the color of oranges. And by the way, I still think oranges can be written as orange or green, depending on where you're from. <laughs> um, Oyunga Pala's writing as cooking and chowinness. I think I pronounced, it, pronounced that correctly. Um, correct me if I didn't. Jocelyn passionately trying to convince Brian Joseph Ngoge during our writing ethics class. Or um, Eunice's birthday story where a character ma made cake for a man who was getting married. Or Doreen's deeply detailed writing. Edward's smiling face and always blessing us and his commitment to writing in Swahili. Mr. Ladan always commenting on how old he is. Though when I saw his picture, I think he may be too hard on himself. Or David Omondi occasionally popping up on screen and blessing us with his smiling face. This Writers Guild November cohort has truly been a special ride. And as our lovely mentor Patricia says, if you know, you know. Thank you. <laughs> um, and JV, that was a lovely speech. You actually made your speech like you are doing a storytelling session. Um, thank you so much. And the way you've captured each and everybody in the class, uh, it's really interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have any guests that you'd want to invite? Yeah, so I had invited my friend in California, um, but she didn't respond. And um, I think she just got caught up with some other things. So okay. I don't have anyone, but I have you guys. So that's good. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's well. <laughs> okay. It's, it's well. Thank you so much. And for that speech, we might need it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person was. We haven't clapped. Oh, we have to clap again properly, yeah? Oh, Grace. All right. Uh, the next person was Akinyi. OK, yes, Patricia. I'm sorry, one of my guests is really in the village, and his phone is about to die. Could he go fast? <laughs> yes, please. OK, Mr. Asari. Oh, oh, all right. Good morning, all. Morning. I don't know if you can see me. I didn't really want you to see me because I'm so deep in a farm. Mm. <laughs> but but I'm so happy to join today, and I wish to offer my congratulations to all the um, the people graduating today from the Writers Guild. I have known Eunice. Akinyi for a long time. She's been my student in my literature classes at the Sacred Heart Girls School, Mukumu. I know that she is a good writer, so this didn't come as a surprise to me. I wish her plus all her teammates the best in their future writing endeavors. I'm sure we all know that writing is the best form of catharsis. I hope that we all uh, like use it to vent whenever we need to vent and to mold our careers. Apart from teaching English and literature, I also write in the standard. You could check out my piece today in the Eve Pullout, page 17, titled um, Stop Posting Your Kids Online. And let's all journey together in the writing path. Once more, congratulations, Eunice, and congratulations all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I am, I am a, I'm a very disciplined student because I am a teacher, and our principal in this course, Miss Patricia, I told us to write a speech. Man, I wrote, I wrote a speech. So I'm just going to read my speech and 
it's not so long, though I'm a very wordy person, but I'm going to read it and I hope we all enjoy this. So Saturdays do come with blessings to me. My birthday this year was on a Saturday and one of the most renowned writers that I'd always wanted to talk to me, talked on a Saturday, that is Mr. Kinyanjui Kumbani. My writing journey started on a Saturday actually because this is when I met a prolific editor, Dr. Rito Modiambo. And this is a, still a Saturday, the very first Saturday of November that I got a chance to join the Write Your Passion class. So Saturdays are a big, big blessing to me. Uh, well, I've always tried doing this then, later, and doing that, just to see if I have the set abilities as, and skills. And well, today I'll mention the topmost that I thought I'd do better but the reception wasn't really what I expected. I thought, I thought I'd do better when it came to debating. Sorry. I thought I'd do better when it came to debating. Well, I tried and still into my explorations into campus, I still didn't do it well as expected. Well, this is one of my very interesting quotes that I have in person. You are never going to succeed without positive energy around you. People have to believe in you all the way up and see you succeed with them. Well, this is what my high school literature teachers did to me. They thought my essays were the very best and they awarded me points and pulled my hands through. Well, they still believed that I could do public speaking and debating and they still threw me into the excursion. Well, this is why I decided to invite my literature high school teacher who just spoke, Mr. Aseri Dixon. It was a very good honor to see you around. Later on in campus, my course did a project in a writing course that was in my first year, second semester, a course called The Art of Writing, which was taught by a lecturer called Dr. Triza Akini. I invited her, but unfortunately enough, she didn't make it because she went to church today. So it was at this very point that I stumbled upon Writers Guild and life has never been the same again. Um, Writers Guild has opened a myriad of opportunities since my campus days. And today as I commence, seems to be like one of the greatest highlights in my writing journey. I would like to thank the organizing body for this course, starting from our very own father of writers, Gabriel Dinda, and the mother of writers, who I'm not seeing here, Vera Omocha. Um, I, have a, I have a father here in the Writers Guild, apart from Gabriel. Gabriel is the main father. I have a small father, Bran Nyagol, and his wife, Naomi Nyaboke. I think they all went to church. I would also like to extend a hand of gratitude to Griffins. I don't know where he is, but he should be here too. And to our facilitators, Oyunga Pala, Dr. Tomo Diambo, Kinyanjui, and all my classmates, Jerry specifically, she always tried to reach out, man. After the editorial classes, everyone needed a counselor and Jerry came in. Doreen, Doreen, Doreen has been hosting me Doreen has been editing my stories. You mean, it's, it's so shameful that Doreen is a mathematics and computer studies graduate. Here I am, a literature graduate, being corrected by Doreen every night and day. Thank you so much, Doreen. <laughs> Ladan, Ladan, Ladan has edited my stories. Thank you so much, Ladan. David has always related with me in class from culture to tribe to everything, David has been there. Jocelyn, I can't dare not mention you today. Harriet, <laughs> Harriet, thank you so much for staying around. And Brian, Brian always tried to call, Brian always wanted me to write. Thank you so much because without you people, the course wouldn't have been as exciting as it was. And that is why I want to say a very big thank you. And before I leave, I actually have my guests here. Uh, one of them spoke. Uh, apology was sent by one of my mentors from campus. He is funny. I have very funny mentors because this particular one is a lecturer of physics and mathematics from Asinde Muliro University. That is where I did graduate. And yet another is Dr. Triza Akinyi, who is our curriculum support head at my former university. And there are these people here who are in my inbox that I should not mention them. Dr. Dr. Kimathi, thank you so much. I mean, doctors who write, you've really inspired me. Uh, Deka is not here, but 
it's really been of an inspiration. I mean, you see those people who you read their stories and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Deka, Deka, thank you so much in your absentia. And one of my greatest support systems is also here. He, you mean, he didn't go to church because of me today. Edgar, thank you so much for joining in the call. Um, they have really been wanting not to speak, but I'll just like to extend a gratitude, a hand of gratitude to them. I know that they really matter because I, some, I didn't actually expect they were gonna log in for this commencement ceremony but they're here to, for me. So thank you so much, Dr. Tariq Kimathi and Edgar. And my high school teacher who is here, Dixon Aseri, he has, I know he has told you about his standard writings. He does such an amazing work there. So for to the entire Writers Guild, Writers Guild has been home. I don't, I don't know, I think I should enroll for another Write Your Passion cohort six. Yes, so um, Kimathi is saying I brought my whole village. No, I didn't because today is Saturday, everyone has gone to church, you are lucky. But thank you so much, Patricia. You know, being a principal is not easy. Um, reaching out to us to send our assignments. I never wanted Wednesday to reach before sending an assignment. Thank you so much, Patricia. You've really done us justice. And as we commence today, it's a joy. I couldn't even sleep. I know this is crazy, but it's a, it's a real, real joy. And I'd love to thank everyone who has joined me today in this. And Gabriel, I think we should meet. Thank you so much, Writers Guild Kenya. Thank you, Eunice. Thank you, Eunice. Um, you now have the tools to go out and write and edit. Don't let mathematicians take over from you. Um, and I think Saturday, you forgot to mention Saturday is special because you are SDA, but anyway, by the way. Um, you said there is another guest here. We can give him or her a chance to say something. Yeah, um, well, I've received requests, but I know this one is not going to let me down. Dr. Tari Kimathi Makini, go. Oh my God, Kimathi! Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so this is so impromptu, but anyway, uh, I'm glad to have known Eunice. Yeah, and I'm glad. Uh, okay, uh, when I met, I didn't know she was in Writers Guild, but yeah, now now I'm better to know she's been in the Write Your Passion course. And she's now also in the Writers Guild group. I'm an incubate alumni. I'm a graduate, uh, so to say, from the first class. Yeah, and it was uh, it was so instrumental to me. Uh, it uh, it it really helped me grow. And uh, yeah, as uh, one of us had mentioned, it's one of the let's say main highlight, highlights of. Uh, of my writing journey so far. So I'm really glad to see all of us uh, who've been through this class. I, <clears throat> I'm envious of the facilitators you, you are mentioning uh, because they are some of the people we look up to uh, in our writing journey. Yeah, but I'm so happy you joining us and uh, Karibuni to the Writers Incubates uh, family. And uh, we hope to interact more and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Kimathi. Uh, thank you so much, Kimathi. If Kimathi did uh, put the video on, Jerry would have found uh, somewhere to put the handsome guy. The handsome <laughs> guy who writes and stuff like that. Anyway. And a doctor, and a doctor to be <laughs> precise, man. <laughs> you would have gotten a character. We'll find a way, we'll find a way to make it happen. So For the next worry. story. <laughs> so we met when she was in Kenya last time. Yeah, so if you have gotten any bits to include in her characters, I think she yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the next Tarura victim. <laughs> I know. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we're going to move to Doreen. Doreen, you can... Uh, start and then invite somebody uh, to talk, so your guest to talk after you. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, as you all heard, my name is Doreen. I have a degree in mathematics and computer science. And uh, yes, I am also a writer. <laughs> so my writing journey has been quite an interesting one. I used to be quite a sporadic writer who would either write every day for a month or once in two years until my sister, who is here today, made me write a startup blog. It's called the Blue Show Up. Uh, this has really taught me the necessity of being a disciplined and intentional writer. And uh, these values have been emphasized all through the Write Your Passion program. I joined this program because I had reached a point where I was losing sight of why I write. And my friend Winnie Cherop, who is also here uh, and is an alumnus of uh, Write Your Passion, she graduated in the previous class. She also convinced me that this program will be worth my time and I can attest to the fact that she did not lie. And um, this journey has opened me up to, to the advantage of being consistent, of being intentional, and it has taught me that writing is a powerful tool that not only shapes the attitudes and the practices of those people around me, but also mine as, as a writer. It has made me aware of my God-given responsibility that I carry and that I need to carry it gracefully. As I graduate today, I am grateful for the skills and the knowledge imparted to me by the different facilitators that took their time to work with us. I'm also grateful to my fellow classmates who humbly shared their different experiences and expertise with me. I am grateful to my sister, Rachel, again, who pushed me to start a blog. And uh, I'm grateful for my dad, who is also here. <laughs> because he is very present in my life, not only as a writer, but in everything that I do. And he happens to be my pro bono editor. So everything, most of the things I write, I send it to him and he does, he does the editing for me. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Oyunga Pala for he reviewed my blog and gave me very insightful and constructive feedback. Um, to Gabriel and Patricia, I cannot thank you enough for being with us all through this journey, week in, week out, giving us support and just being so present in this journey. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank God because he's the one who made all this very possible. So to my fellow classmates, let us keep writing the world awaits. Thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> I would like to invite my dad, Mr. Nicholas Ndiamandiwa, to speak. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I am honored to be here. I am very grateful. And as a father, as a parent, we plant seeds. The same way that it was, it is written in the book of, of Matthew, chapter 13, from verse 3 up to verse 8, you plant different seeds, different seeds grow in, in different ways. Writing is one of the seeds that I planted in, in my children as they were growing up. And I'm grateful that it is one of the seeds that has grown. And I'll take this opportunity to thank Doreen for taking it up. I, I particularly thank Rachel because she's more or less the one who has irrigated the, the seeds. So Doreen was the good soil, yes, uh, but Rachel was, has been the good rain that has made the seed grow. I'm very grateful for the Writers Guild because it is through the Writers Guild that we can get all the harvests as it's written in the Book of the Magic. 38 times, 30,000 times and all that. So I really appreciate what the writer's guild has done. And just to acknowledge Rachel's input, I, would, I won't talk much, let me give this chance to Rachel to, to say how it feels to irrigate a seed that has been planted by somebody else. Rachel, say something. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um... 
I am Rachel Temoy Diama. I am the elder sister to the Rim, second born to my awesome, amazing father, Nicholas. Um, I, I have to say that um, in my profession, I do a lot of writing, but I have never been able to play with words to, to even think of other words, because my sister writes things and I ask her, where did you get this word from? How did you just pick it and use it? I never understand how she, <laughs> she, she does that. Um, and it's, it's a skill I, I am in awe of and her patience, her, she's just too talented. And I have to say, I'm very proud uh, to say she's my sister. I, I spell it all over, you think I'm done who does the right thing. Like, yeah, this is my sister, she has a blog. Um, she's very good at this, you should read it. You, should, you know, I am, I'm always out here championing and, and putting her out there because I don't feel like she does it enough. We should definitely should because she's very skilled and talented. Um, I'm happy that she went through this class because um, even when it comes to her own blog, she's been very diligent in posting. Um, so I think it has helped with the aspect of not writing as frequent as she wanted. But even the time she's challenged herself to say, I want to be writing something every day. Um, this has happened during this period and even up a while back. And it's been impressive. I've been, I've been impressed to see the quality of work she's put out there. So I can only imagine the quality, the additional quality that we're going to enjoy as the rest of the world, thanks to the fact that she's going through this training. And also congratulations to the rest of you. Um, I'm sure your stories and, and um, what you've gone through in life have built you and have made it, um, made you able to, to be the writers and the storytellers that you are. So I wish you all the best. And, um, but yes, my sister comes first. So I will continue championing for my sister. Congratulations to everyone and have a good day. Bye-bye. Doreen is still speechless. Thank you so much, Doreen. I feel like you have a family that um, really understands what writing is. I don't think anybody in my family understands what writing is. They always <laughs> ask me, so do you think you're going to change careers in the future or are you going to practice your Bachelor of Commerce or I? what are you doing in writing and stuff like that? Are you sure you'll go to the TV? Thank you. Thank you, you have a wonderful family and Thank I'm you. glad you're here. Please use this one, to make them more proud and uh, also make us proud. Thank you. All right, now the next person will be the person we've decided to adopt the son, David Joy, and um, will be followed by Brian Joseph. And uh, I don't know where Ladan is, Ladan will follow also. Uh -huh. So thank you so much, uh, Patricia. And it's very, very nice to see everyone's faces here. We haven't met physically. Uh, this is so sad and very bad for the world that we have today. But uh, all the same, we have adopted the other ways of meeting and now we are here. So it has been quite a journey. Uh, the last five weeks has been very, very great. And uh, putting a face and voice and hearing people's ideas around writing has been a very great uh, thing. So for me, it started by having an inspiration to always just leave something behind for the next generation, for people that we are with right now, but there's always been those barriers that we, at one point in our class, highlighted uh, as to what are those things that are not making us right. So one thing that really struck me is when we came to our first class and we were asked, 
how could we live and not and not tell a story how could we live and not tell a story i mean just take a minute and reflect around that for sure it's like you're just living and your path is the moment you fed off the whole everything that you did and nobody can trace a little bit of whatever it is that you left behind so it's it's in itself doing a this justice to the generations that are coming this justice to yourself because you've gone away with experience you've gone away with knowledge you've gone away with things that you should have left behind and other people would have reaped benefits from them so i and that brings me to the call of we are very different we are very different in our frame of thoughts in how we reference uh, our work in the way we perceive nature things in our in our lives eh? so please take the courage take the courage one thing that really encouraged me in uh, mr yunga's class is that uh, we all have a fridge we all have a fridge you remember the story around what is in your fridge gourmet <laughs> yes we all have a fridge our fridge our fridges even right now has very many different things yeah so please make sure that at one point you pick one item write a thing about it pick the next thing write a thing about it because it is an enormous world it is it is so unlimited yeah and and that's the way so for me uh, in the space of public health uh, and of course we were one i was once challenged as well that david it's not just about the story around public health the world is so big so it's it's looking at it like there's not much that has been spoken as to my feeling and perception around public health there's not much that has been spoken about public health issues do people really understand what it is and uh, sorry, I come from, I have a little bit of a background in politics. So sometimes I tend to advocate for my, my fellow colleagues that we have more or less some related uh, uh, issues around. So like for, the, for right now, it's about, I really want to steer or rather be in the space of making sure that the public health department in Kenya stands. And one of the things is just coming to that space and pulling up stories that will definitely make the department viable and people see that this is something that is essential for our health systems. Sorry, I'm, I'm now turning back to the health issues. <laughs> but one of the powers for us to be able to bring uh, importance, for us to be able to bring, you know, viabilities of such, such kind of ideas is the ability to put it down. Can you be able to write it? Can you be able to demonstrate it so that not only you have it in your head, but someone else can be able to relate to it wherever it is that they have? Of course, we have lots of spaces to share information. And that is the first step towards what I think uh, we really want to do. So for me in my journey, I've always looked up towards uh, uh, very learned uh, writers people who have grown enormously around their writing capacities, abilities. And I remember at one point, joining Writers Guild has always been more or less like a dream or rather like I want to, but whenever the class is set, like the code four, left me just by a very small margin. <laughs> then Patricia, you remember very well. I think we had a very long call trying to really ask you to please let me join the class. And you said, no, David, it's another one is coming. And the worst came you mentioned, remember at some point that David, I don't think we'll have another class uh, towards the end of the year. It will come next year in January. <laughs> well, I said, well, no, uh, I think, please, if there's the next class, and I think I, I'm one of the people who really pushed for this cohort five to happen. Uh, in 2020, before we ended the year. So mm -hmm. I really asked Patricia, even if we will just be the two of us, even if we'll just be three, even if how many will be found, let us have the class, yeah? And it's because I have the background around how Writers Guild started and uh, where it has grown. 
and looking at people like Deka. Deka was my classmate, my schoolmate, my classmate. Yeah, uh, I've seen them grow. Like, so I wondered, what is this formula that people get from Writers Guild? That the moment they graduate, or rather, once they finish out, then they just become so different people. They can write. I mean, it's Griffin. Those are people who can write poetry, my friend. You look at those words and you're like, what the hell? My friend, did you just read other books somewhere? You left Kenya and came back. What is it that you did that just makes you a different person? <laughs> so, so that has always been amazing for me. And that is an experience that I have always wanted to have for myself to be able to pull out some, some of these experiences that I undergo. So guys, uh, I don't want to really go much into talking and talking. I didn't write a speech, but I just have points of encouragement to all of us. Number one, we I hopefully that we wrote, we took notes for all the classes that uh, we've had uh, from, from the day one that was facilitated by Gabriel Linda and to the last day. So one of the things that really stood out for me is Mr. Oyunga Pala's class those eight steps towards writing a good story. It starts from the step one, believe that you can, becoming and rewriting. And to the last step of seasoning, what Jerry calls sweetness. Yeah, there are eight steps towards having a good story. So for me, that really has to stand out and please if you it's also if, if it relates to you as well remember to always go by that then there's thing there's this thing around building your brain muscle my mentor challenges me that david you want to write okay so for you to write one page i want you to read 100 pages that's what he tells me so by by building your brain muscle is you're gaining the word power, you're gaining the vocabulary bank, you're gaining, you're becoming it, writing becomes effortless because the ideas and the structure in which you need to put it down is already here. I mean, you go through a hundred pages, my dear, and you, do, you can't really come out of that without seeing how those words and the logic flow goes around. And uh, Doreen's sister just mentioned around wordplay. Uh, earlier before, and I was even telling my family here yesterday when you we were having a that I want to start my master's, but I don't want to go to a university where a lecturer will come to class and start telling us maybe it's a, a lesson on microbiology. <laughs> and they start saying that, uh, what is microbiology? I mean, we are big people today. You just want to go in the normal structure of teaching people. What is, what is, what is? And then you give answers and go away. No, no, no. Give it a different test. Yeah, because again, you are masters of these things right now. I'm sure if you look at the way uh, we went through the editor, editorial class of uh, the other day, and we were all shocked of, wow, this is how it's going to be tough on us. <laughs> Everybody freezed. But that just gave us another different thought. Like, let us not just be very normal. Eh? Let us not be very classical. Yeah, let us not be very normal just try to bring a different perspective around how you're putting it, you know, give it a different meaning. And there's always just a way that you can play with words and still maintain the meaning, but it sounds very differently. Yes. You remember when now, Jerry, you remember when now Mr. Yunga was saying that you can now pick the different ingredients, yeah? Yeah, and put it into your meal, eh? Yeah, so yes. you can make it very differently. The same way he says that uh, mango juice is mango juice, but if you went to two rivers, mango juice will be served with a, a certain a small straw and uh, a lemon or rather like another, it's a flower, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it just becomes so different, yeah? So that really uh, encouraged me for myself. Then again, it starts by just being aware of ourselves, self-discovery. Yeah, what is this space that you want to get into? People have written, writing is can be done in entirely all the subjects that you can think around. But it's what do you really what do you really want? Because you want to avoid a lot of struggles, 
but get into a space that you understand, get into a space that is very clear for you and you have the command, yeah, of, of that space. Yeah, what my boss normally says that uh, if we write concepts or proposals, for him, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't want to get into writing things that he has no mastery of. He's not a master of them. Like for example, right now, the newest, the newest uh, concepts that are coming up is around climate change. People are starting to focus around climate change and those things. So is, is, uh, there's a time that we were tasked to write uh, a concept around climate change. But he completely just pulled out and said, you guys, I've yeah. never even read anything about climate change. I can't even start defining it clearly for you who are my professionals to understand. So I'm not going to write it. So that just tells you that move into spaces that once you move into spaces that you are, you are master of and you will have very easy times in writing. So I've already said that uh, we are different and we, we look at things very differently. Then now the other thing is even if this class comes to an end or these sessions comes to an end, I think for me, Saturdays will always continue. I will always continue to have classes on, on Saturdays as from nine to 12. Yeah, sorry, sorry about the background. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I'll always continue to have a class every day on Saturday. It's because uh, referencing back to Mr. Younger Pala's class, he says that Ideas come even at the times that you don't, you never needed them. So when you walk out to the markets, when you go to town, you are meeting your friends, you are meeting someone else. Yeah, there, there, there's always that idea that will spike you. But most of the times we are never keen to put it down so that it never fades away. Because the world today and the technology and the, it's, it's quite so many things going on. You know, I'm here, you're looking at your phone, distractions, you're here, you're moving to town, people are moving around, guys are talking. There are so many things. So there's a lot of distractions that just makes ideas keep on flipping and flipping and flipping. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. So please make sure that you note anything that strikes you down so that you never miss it. And remember that's how the dragon, the dragonfly of the sea by Ivono Diambo oh, came to be, yeah? Uh, Yunga Pala says that uh, the lady used to just walk in town and whenever she stories with people, you'd always look at her and she's writing a point on her notebook and you're like, what am I, did I say something very white or, <laughs> or you're just trying to, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's it guys. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, I think now it's, it's uh, we have been given the foundation and for me, this is not just even the end, it's now the start in itself. What you are being given is the basics towards, towards you being able now to look at writing at a very, in a very different perspective and wanting to, yeah, to make a difference. And remember, please, there's a message and there are people. There's a message and there are people. In between, is where all of us, the six, five, ten of us belong. We are the message transmitters to the people. You are the carriers. You relay the message to the people. Yeah? Mr. Yunga Pala says that uh, writers are the thinkers and movers of the society. Wow. Like that class really just killed me. Like every word was just for the right position, what needed to be done. I mean, I really liked it. I really, really liked it. So guys, um, I don't want, let me finish by saying that uh, I want to thank everyone. This class has been such one of a very free spirited people. Everyone here is just yeah, like, let's just be, let's just be, yeah. <laughs> Jerry, yeah, it's very nice meeting you. Jocelyn, I'm Kambwa, nice to meet you. Brian, Joseph, nice to meet you. Edwin Omboy, I hope you came from uh, Mombasa, now you're in Nairobi. <laughs> uh, very nice to meet you. Doreen, yeah. And uh, Akinyi, Eish, Akinyi. Yeah? Life, fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A true definition of live life and it's called what? LOL. Yeah. 
Live life. Say no more. Say no more. Live love and love. Yeah. Live love yes. and love. Exactly. Yes. Yes. It's all about life. I mean, just have fun in what you guys are doing, and uh, I really. Uh, thank you guys for meeting you and it has been very 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 nice to interact share ideas for me i think for our interaction platforms that will still continue and i would even want to start direct connections uh, at some point in between the classes uh, it has been very hectic for me but I'm, I, I always followed up with patricia just to get what was done what needed to be done and then we move forward patricia and gabriel i mean you guys where did you learn your patience or where did you get your patience from? <laughs> where in handling people, in how you're supposed to just have these things done, you people are amazing. You're such amazing people. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> when you meet Patricia and when you meet Gabriel, it's like you're meeting same people. <laughs> when I talk to Patricia, it's like I've talked to Gabriel. <laughs> Yeah, because I think more or less the answer that Patricia gives you is more or less the same answer that Gabriel gives you. Yeah, these guys so reflect themselves like, I don't know. So amazing. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very thankful and uh, great that you guys had the patience to be with us, walk with us through the journey and show us those tricks and tricksters of how to go about writing. Patricia, thank you so much. Uh, the number of times I even call you in the night just to catch up with you and we end up really having a very weird conversation where I end up being guilty of first I missed a class, oh, I did this. I mean, I, thank you, thank you, thank you for your understanding nature. So yes, so for everyone else, uh, I really want to appreciate and please let's continue having the classes on. Whenever you feel like you need to put all of us together, I to wake up a more jatafadali sawa sawa otherwise thank you so much i appreciate it mm. i'll advise you people to google rapogi boys yes, and to google to google hoba bay county just in case you get <laughs> 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 Yeah. You all have one advantage. You are a writer, so yeah. Homa Bay will not affect you. The men from <laughs> Homa Bay won't do anything to you. They're scared of you. So, but that's just a little a gist of how Homa Bay is. <laughs> no, Patricia, like you're exaggerating. <laughs> so, you see the one laughing. Baba has affected her so much. <laughs> and Rapogi. <laughs> and St. Joseph's Rapogi. The Ulanda. She's Ulanda, this one. <laughs> ay, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, David. Thank, uh, you. thank you for going deep and explaining ex exactly your highlights. Yeah. And uh, I hope you guys keep this. Uh, this is more of when we're building this class, we want it to be a family, not something oh. that it's just you only growing. So reach out to each other and get to know each other and what kind of writing they can edit your work, they can proofread your work and oh. grow together. Sure. Um, Ladan is sick. So after the class, uh, you guys can reach out to him and oh, uh, see how he's doing and pray for him. Uh, the next person we'll have is Brian Joseph. So Brian Joseph, the floor is yours. Uh, David, did you have a guest? Oh, uh, yes, I did, but uh, I'm sorry. It's the same day that my son is having a birthday. So she's out up and down picking a few things. Uh, she wants to join me. I also invited my boss, by the way, to this, uh, but uh, I think he's unable to join, so I'll excuse him, but I'll, I'll ask him later. Then right. uh, the other thing I wanted to say, sorry, Patricia, is that uh, yesterday I've always had interaction with other people about their writing journey, and so many people are reaching out to me wanting to join the next class. So maybe if you'll be finalizing, you'll let us know how, do, I, do we give out your contacts or Gabriel's or what do we do so that, uh, like about, I have about 10 people who wants to join. So 
Uh, tell us to, you'll give us the criteria in which they can join the club. All right, all right. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, Brian Joseph, over to you. Thank you so much for the chance. Well, I'm really humbled to be here in front of all of you. Oh, to me, this is a dream come true. Like, super, super dream. And I always learned that to keep my dreams valid at least for once. One of my dreams has come true. So, without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this chance to appreciate Gabriel from since I met him, he has been more of a father figure to me. Like, he's always there for me. Anything that he has written, anything new that he is posting, he always makes sure that he does share with me so that at least I can know what is going on. Like, he also shared these, these like, he just wants me to to be successful just like him since he also shared um, some websites of we, where one can learn for free and definitely i'm starting a class soon to eh, i want to be like noreen at least i want to challenge her in her computer science i also want to become a computer science literate i want to challenge her that what can she do that I can't. So, but from that, Rita's Yield has at least so much potential in me from since the first day that I joined the group. It has been mega, mega. It has been this very mega big thing. I always appreciate them for, for whatever they need to me. It has helped me become the person that I am today. I never know that I had so much potential in me till I joined them. I'm also very glad that Gabriel and the entire writers can give me this chance to be part of the cohort five. It, it has it has always been my dream. It has always I was always wanted like when is the next class? I've tried. I want to uh, I just wanted to be part of the class. And Gabriel can attest to that to that. Strika can attest to that to make sure that I'm talking the truth. So also my aim after learning all this is to Install my full teams and also start a whole new generation of a great reading generation, at least like where Gabriel challenged us to see where people bought a book in the first one month. And there are not so many people, at least maybe one, if I can remember well. So, like, I just want to do help such generation where. If you can ask a person where which book have you read in the first one month yet, he'll give you a list of books. That is that is really what I want. So to my esteemed friend, the Plato Modiambo, though I'm still afraid of you. But I know your harshness and hardness of my writing is what is going to make me a better and greater writer and to my dream person Kinyanji Kombani I always had so much about you I always wanted to meet you and now since I did I just want to tell you that I'm that young Kinyanji Kombani out here and someday I hope to be to be like you, or if not to be like you, to become more of a better person, a better writer, just like you. And 
to everyone else, to my fellow classmates. Thank you so much. It has, I have really enjoyed the class. And today's Lynn. Mm -hmm. We soon, 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 we are starting to write a book. So, soon maybe, probably let's, let's give us, let's give ourselves the next six months. Probably we shall be giving our manuscripts to Patricia to review them, of which we are, we are correcting. There is an image that, we, that I shared to her. And since personally or not, I was, we are still thinking of the story, like, of what, okay, let me post this question to this one. Okay, the story is simply about two people, two brothers. So one of them is, okay, one of them is disabled, the other one is disabled, where, like, he's blind. So the two of them have this secret. But the Ebu brother doesn't want the secret to be leaked out. And so since the only person who knows this secret is his brother, he goes ahead and kills him. So whatever we are trying to still figure out with this lean is, which, this, which secret is this that, that can surpass blood, like, then that blood is thicker than water. Since then, this thing might be very deep, be very, very deep. So just as anyone, everyone, just assist, just assist us and give us options. Give us, give us whatever you think about it. This and probably for from all your options, you'll be able to come up with a story. And let's keep writing and. Let's keep interacting more. And one day when we shall all meet and celebrate people, like your book has been written, you have been published on. You've been nominated to become an award winning writer. We shall all celebrate you. And thank you, everyone. And that was my time. Over to you, Patricia. Thank you so much, Brian. Can we clap for Brian? So I brought along someone. So apparently, I had to bring him in since he only sees me as this joker. Since whatever we only do with him is joke around when I go to the when I go to their place so at least for once i wanted to go to make him see that once i can become serious with life so i would now like to invite him is a cousin of mine and just come say hi to all of you and probably just talk to you some two or two uh, one or two things Hi everyone. Hi. Yeah, I'm Hi. a cousin of Brian Joseph. I, I wish to congratulate him and his colleagues very much. Do I seem I'm, I'm a quick he's not serious, but I've proved it. And I don't have much to say then and I want to congratulate him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Brian Joseph. And uh, I'm glad that people are going to start taking you seriously because this one is live on live recording on Facebook. So people are going to really know it's actually. <laughs> Never saw that. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I would want to move very fast uh, to our guest of Honor today. Uh, his name is Sam Jim. Uh, Sam Jim is a CEO, is a writer, is a singer, is a rapper, 
all those things you can put together is those things. And his book, he was in the last class, and right now we have his book. Like he has a book out already. It was launched, um, when was, I think last Saturday, it was launched. And some Jim is here to talk to us about something to encourage us. So welcome, Mr. Sam Jim, and it's good to see you. Ah, that's the book, In Search of the Great Kahuna. It, it goes for a thousand book. Sorry, I'll have to say that. So Mr. Sam Jim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. That was very lovely. What an amazing introduction. Some of the things which you mentioned, I don't think if I can still do them, but it's uh, good that you mentioned all the same. <laughs> so how are you, everyone? We are well, thank you. You're fine. Uh, wow. I'm humbled and honored to be the guest of honor in this Write Your Passion graduation. I am an, uh, I am an alumnus of uh, the class of, was it September or uh, October, Madam Patricia? I don't remember. It was September, you graduated in October. Yes, so I am very fresh. I'm a very fresh alumnus. And I can confess that this class is extremely unique. Uh, one thing I like about this class is there is a lot of passion. I also love the fact that this class is immensely inspired by family. It's also inspired by brotherhood and I would say a camaraderie of sorts because everybody seems to like the other person the web knitted by the family thread is very, very strong in this class. So this is something I would like to say is very unique. And well done, the class of November. Uh, Gabriel, it seems like you have cultivated a farm of writers in this uh, literal orchard. You have very many people in your farm now who are literally blossoming. So what I want to say today is, uh, first and foremost, my heart is overwhelmed. It is immersed, immersed in a fountain of joyous palpitations and a sizzling of excitement. This is indeed a momentous occasion, not only for you as proud graduates of this Write Your Passion class, uh, but also for me, a former graduate. Allow me first and foremost to congratulate the Writers Guild of Kenya for achieving this and for nurturing writers in Kenya. What you have achieved today is definitely no mean feat. As you are told, my name is Sam Jim Mwanyasi. I am an entrepreneur. I am also a budding author, probably I would say the youngest kid of the, or the, the youngest kid on the block in the world of writing. I graduated a couple of months ago, as I've said. This to me was a significant milestone in my literal journey. However, I would say the icing of the cake for me after this milestone was publishing of my first book. This book, In Search of the Great Kauna. Gabriel and his team were gracious enough to allow me to sit under their tree, to enjoy the shade of their tree, to savor the fruits of this tree, to share in the glory of their story. And because of them, I am now referred to as the author of the book in search of the great Kahuna. By the way, I have a copy and I will have a small quiz may be given by Patricia or Gabriel to give to one of you with a book. So the class of November, 
you took the bold step in stepping into an arena which is known to scare even the, breast, the, the bravest of people. Writing is not for the faint-hearted. It calls for character, attitude, and resilience. You, are, uh, you chose to enroll to pursue the course, and for that, I salute you. I honor you. You are only a few among many. And though they say many are called, few are chosen. You are the chosen few. What you have accomplished today is a testament of your desire to change the world, to change yourself, and to change the narrative that you would like to leave as your legacy on the surface of the earth. You have proven today that you are ready to be creators of your own history, to chart your own cause, to serve your own cuisine in life. Ladies and gentlemen, Karl Marx once said these words, and I quote, catch a man a fish, and you can sell it to you. Teach a man to fish, and you ruin a wonderful business opportunity. By empowering you with these writing skills, Writers Guild of Kenya has ruined a wonderful business opportunity for some folks. They, they have ruined a business opportunity for the people who wanted to catch you in a small pool, the small shallow pool of ignorance. They wanted to catch you and control you, but now you have broken free. You have now become masters of your own future. What you have acquired are tools to shape your future, implements to sculpture your ultimate destiny. Yes, your destiny. You can now use the power bestowed upon you to write. The ink is still very fresh. The pen is still very sharp. Use it to write and share your story with the world. The world is eager to listen to your story. The class of November. Why do you still have any doubts in your mind? Doubts about your inability to impact the people around you. Doubts about your ability to influence your generation. From now on, peel out that sheet of doubt, that thick skin of what if, that veil of fear, that layer of how and why and what and when and who, that dark cloud called procrastination. Remove it and toss it away into the deep of oblivion. Instead, I would urge you, ladies and gentlemen, put on the armor of valor. Dress in your best regalia, the regalia of, yes, I can. Because it's not a matter of what if. You have what it takes to create a masterpiece, a bestseller, an anthology to win awards. So, the stage is all yours. The stage is all yours, ladies and gentlemen. March on. The arena is for you to shine, to excel, to exude, to exude brilliance, to emit your light, the light you have within you, to illuminate the world with your light your sheen, your shine, your spectacle. Shine on the people around you, dazzle them with the skills you have acquired from this class. Mesmerize them with the artistry you have discovered that you possess. Astound them with your choice of words. 
above all, write. Write about the thoughts in your mind. Write about the desires in your soul. Write, write about the feelings they impart in you with their actions. Write about the strange things they do with their hands. Write about the weird things that happen around you. The good, the bad, the ugly. But just write. At the end, yes, at the end, the world will acknowledge your writing. Your creative genius will be acknowledged by the whole world. The world will say that once upon a time you lived, you walked the surface of the earth, you walked the surface of this world and left a mark, an indelible mark, because you changed a dogma. You wrote and you helped the world to stay alive. Because you wrote, the world will continue to exist. The world will continue to live. The world will survive because you have decided to write. So keep writing, wonderful people, and thank you very much. Congratulations, the class of November. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Sam Jim. And uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you so much, Sam Jim. And I hope uh, you all will take what Sam Jim has told you. And he's a true definition of right. Because Sam Jim has so many so many things that he takes care of but he takes time to sit down and not write an article write a book this shows you there is no way no day i want to hear jerry telling me ah patricia that's a very very small um uh what did you say the other time um notice i i need to get notice to write we have to get to find time to write. We have to find time. Whatever time, there is no day you have to tell me that I don't have time to write. Get time and write. Just write. Thank you so much. Now, we have two of our trustees here, uh, Douglas and Vera. So they're going to talk on behalf of the trustees of Writers Guild. So Douglas, if you are there, uh, please say something and then you'll be the one inviting Vera after your speech. Um, as you can imagine, I, I, I was just following silently. Um, <laughs> so I, I didn't really know that I'll be speaking. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the ladies and gentlemen graduating. You all look very bright. I wish you had all put your videos on. I was seeing you one by one as you speak. I was first of all following on, on, on Facebook and then um, um, in Akini had, um, um, what do I say? She, did, she, she sent me an invite that uh, I should come and be her guest by force. So thank you very much, Akini. Uh, <laughs> that's very interesting. So. Um, graduate, graduating as a, as, as a writer from this class is one of the most exciting things you'll have. And it's, it's one step, and it's another step when you move on and try to do some, some, some things. Um, I was following what each and every one of you said, uh, from the one who had zero guests to one who had the whole family in, uh, including the neighbors. Um, that, that, was, that was really exciting. That, I think that was Doreen. Doreen has a very interesting family. Uh, that, that was very, very exciting. Um, so I, I, I just want to challenge you to put, put whatever you've learned to test and um, try and explore fields that are unexplored. Um, try and be unique. Um, I, know, I know everyone has sold you the, 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 the dream of how exciting this market is, but I want to tell you that the writing market is just like any other market, where if you do not try, if you do not uh, put in the hours and try to stand out, you crash down very fast. Um, and also, I hope you are taught about the art of hawking, because you are going to have a lot of hawking to do. 
um, or, or, or rather, uh, as, as we call it in more flashy terms, marketing. <laughs> but as we call it in, in very interesting terms, hawking. So you, you, you really have to, to, to put forward a product that can sell before you can really try to say that you want to sell your right. And I'm really excited that Sam Jim has written a, a book. I am put placing my order publicly. I will find out where to pick it from. Um, I don't know where I need to pick it from, but I really like promoting uh, local local writers because that's just how we grow. If we can be able to put each other out there, but I'm not going to risk putting anyone out there if if I, I don't like their work because then when you promote someone, um, um, you kind of get tied to that brand, and and your friends might not tell you, but they might be hesitant to promote you if you don't put in the hours and put forward quality even for your blog for your book, for your articles, for everything that you're going to write. So just try and be a standout, try and work together as well. Um, try and help each other out. I have written um, one and, let me say one and a, three quarters and a half books. That is very confusing to understand. I've, I've written one book that is published. I've written one that is complete, just awaiting release. And I've written one that is halfway through. So then that's where, how I put, I put those, those, those um, fractions there. And what I learned from, from, from the first book that I wrote, Chasing a Bullet, was just how much a circle of friends can, can help you save on a lot. Um, I paid only one editor for that book. The rest of it was done by my friends, people who are within my circles, people whom I had worked with. And I remain indebted to those, to those people because then they put me in, 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 in the position that I am today where some, somehow my books these days are just selling themselves in a way. So you have to, to work together as well, help each other as much as you can, because then you, you, you put yourself in a position where you already have a, what, what I call a kitchen cabinet that can sort of um, work on your work before the, the, the world that is very, very brutal. I can tell you the world out here is very brutal. Um, someone told me that the cover of my book initially looked like something that was born in a place he doesn't want to go to. And he had to listen to a lot of people who have read the book for him to be convinced to read it. And I thought that was very mean, but I understood what he was saying. So you really have to understand that the world is very, very, very mean. And the more, the more people you, the more eyes you have on your work before you get it out there, the better it is. Um, try and read as much as you can and try and read people that you really want to write like. Um, I, I, if if you go to my the the, the, the YouTube homepage on my on my personal YouTube homepage, you'd think I'm someone who is planning a very a, a mega crime somewhere. I'm always watching crime stuff. I'm always watching uh, suicide kill bombers, uh, serial killers, uh, terrorists. Those those are the things I'm watching. If you look at my bookshelves, I have three of them in the house. I have uh, what I call the insane bookshelf, and then the rest of them are for the public. The insane bookshelf has books for me and me alone. There are crime books. There are books about people killing each other, because I write. Th th those are those are the kind of stories that I'm in. I'm I'm into crime, crime, crime stories. So I have a bookshelf that is just for me. Try and read people that are writing what you want to write, because you understand how different stories are published differently. If I'm writing a love story, the kind of words I will use are very different from when I'm writing Chasing a Bullet. Chasing a Bullet, I really need to write on the edge. So, and when I'm writing a love story, I really, like, really need to appeal to different emotions in different ways. So you, you, when you read the people who write what you want to write, you kind of know how to deliver the message that you want to deliver. So I, I'd, I'd challenge you to dive into such, such areas, identify your niche and, and, and research on your niche Find information on your niche so that you can bring us stories that are authentic, stories that people can relate to, and that those are the things that we like to read. So congratulations and uh, all the best as you go out there. I'll be looking forward to reading all your books. When your book comes out, contact me. Be sure I will buy your book. As long okay. as you are a Kenyan author, you are a young author, be sure. Even if you write a shit story, I will still buy your book and then I'll tell you your story was really shit. <laughs> but I'll first of all buy your story, okay? So um, go out there and write. If you don't find anyone to sell to, just write and produce one copy and bring it to me. Um, we, 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 that one we are sorted. 
So so congratulations to all of you and uh, I wish you well. Um Finally, finally. <laughs> I'd like to I'd love to like work with you since I can see we are on the same line of of writing scenes. Also the story that I was talking about, it's about something related to murder. Now I can see now a dream come true since now you can at least help me identify what what is this big thing that one can be hiding that can make one kill his brother. So I guess probably we later in the day or you can share where I can get you so that we may interact more. Finally the, the missing piece of my puzzle is complete. Thank you so much, Gabriel. My phone number my phone number is public so um anyone who has you <laughs> So <laughs> you can just give me a call in there. I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. Um, yeah, it's very much in public. It's on my website, it's on my Facebook page, it's on um, my, I think it's also on my Amazon page. It's everywhere. So wow. just, just pick it from where you'll pick it and give me a call. Uh, or you can, talk to, you can <laughs> talk to me nicely. You can talk to me nicely. Okay. I, I didn't know that there was corruption in this class, uh, but, but that is corruption. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank, thank you very much. Corruption or... <laughs> trying to fix corruption in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's another story. Whoever is writing about corruption, you can find uh, these two and write about them. Um, so hmm. I want to challenge all of you to read um, a very, a very, a very um, interesting book. It's it, it's interesting because of um, how it combines different styles. And I will, I'll be inviting the author of that book. I don't know whether she's she's realized how her book combines different ways of writing. Um, so I, I I read the book before it was published, um, and it's called Diary of Hamiaha. She 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 already knows something about her. Um, and, and the reason why I challenge you to read that book is because it, it, it has elements of different, it, it has elements of short stories because she gives you very small, many small subplots. It has elements of crime because she gives you elements of not, not, not um, the deep web crime, the, you, know, you, know, you know, the kind of things that we write about that people wonder how we sleep at night, uh, but the subtle ones. Um, it has elements of, um, academic books, it, it, it's a book that would work very well as a novel, a, a, an academic set book as well. Um, it has elements of mystery because there, there are things that I still don't understand about that book. It has diff very, very, very many different elements. My bookshelf is very far from me right now, but I would have shown you the cover. But I'm sure if I asked Bwana Gabriel to pull one, if he doesn't pull one, he should be divorced tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it would be very, very interesting for you to read that book because then you will learn how to, to also bring together different styles of writing in very interesting ways. Uh, these are words I've never told her, but I've written, I've, I've told everyone whom I'm telling to buy her book about the book because I, th I really think it, it, it's a masterpiece. So I, I'll challenge all of you to read it. Um, yes, it's Diary of Amiaha. If I've pronounced it wrongly, I am not going to apologize because that word is... But, but you know, it's Amiya. She'll tell us whether I'm right or wrong. So um, I was told that I should invite her as well. Um, I don't know whether it's illegal for people to put on their cameras, um, but for ladies, <laughs> I understand there are bad hair days. If she says she has a bad hair day, she'll be excused. Uh, <laughs> but I see Gabriel has done his role and he has a copy of the book already. Um, so Vera, I don't know whether you are somewhere in behind the name. Um, let me see whether I'll get her a picture. No, I would get her a picture. She's still she's still on mute on all on all platforms. Uh, so when I see her unmute, I, okay, she has unmuted. So Vera, Karibu Sana. Um, she was one of my best editors, by the way. Um, she 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 did my proofreading and my and editing for my for my book, which was really really amazing. So Vera, take it away. And and Hi, before Dad you. <laughs> Are you being divorced or do you have the copy? <laughs> oh, new, new divorce attorney. <laughs> I, 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 I should, I should really not be in that field. Karibu sana, Vera. 
Thank you, Douglas. Hi. Hi nice hi. to see you. Thank you. Huh. Nice to see you. To see you oh, and then... and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. To see you. Sorry, I'm still in... Oh, well, sorry, I, I would be putting on my video because of a few things. And professional, I'm... Um... <laughs> yeah, okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh. Hello. Oh, oh, okay, hi. Uh, so, congratulations, first off. Congratu Actually, this is congratulations in advance because I'm not, I know Patricia and Gabriel have told you very nice things and I am not the nice one. <laughs> I, behind the scenes, I am the one who crushes dreams or so it's perceived, but not really. I'll explain later. Uh, so I'm saying congratulations in advance because uh, you are not graduating. <laughs> you are starting. So that means that you graduate at the end if there is an end of your writing career or progressively. You'll be graduating every time you're writing, you're graduating. So that's why I'm saying congratulations in advance because the work starts now. Okay. But still, congratulations for taking the class. Congratulations for your patience, for your time, and for all the effort that you've put in through this period. I'm sorry I didn't have the chance to join you during the sessions, but I am proud of what you've done. I am proud uh, that the more better writers, not, not coming up really, but that we're doing this together, that you've given yourself, you've challenged yourself, you've invested in your writing and you're doing more. I hope that all that you've learned during these sessions will propel you, uh, propel your growth in your reading and writing uh, career and journey. And I know I, I don't really have the statistics to prove this, but I believe, or rather I know that people love words. Writers and readers are good people because reading and writing makes us human. Stories make us human, relatable. And we identify more with human struggles and um, challenges and successes. Yeah, so I hope that this also makes you better humans. So all the best with your writing. I look forward to reading your work. I, I said I am not usually the nice person behind the scenes because I happen to be a midwife as a book editor. And that uh, most times is interpreted as the dream crusher. <laughs> but, but really, your writing can can't do without editors. That's why we exist. That's why we are, we, we are there to tell you the, the not so nice things you don't want to hear, like you have to rework this, you have to rewrite this, and all it takes to, to get a better script, to get a better book out there so that you're not rejected by the market. Yes, yeah, so, oh, my name is Vera Omocha. I also, when I'm not, uh, editing. I am also writing. Sorry, we didn't get the, the sample book of my latest book, which is the diary of uh, the Miaha, which is uh, which means Miaha is a recently married young woman, also yeah, something of the sort. So it's it's a memoir of my marriage life in one year. Yeah. <laughs> And no, Douglas, no one is being divorced, at least not today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for getting us a copy. Can you imagine? <laughs> someone, someone decided that there's no divorce today. Patricia, okay. I there, see. There's no divorce. At least, okay, you don't get the job, at least not today. Mostly because I am broke. I don't have the money to pay for a divorce attorney. <laughs> okay, good day. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's an interesting but, book. Everyone should read it. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. So uh, professionally, I am a teacher who opts to teach through books. So my writing, um, I, I write short stories. I've written a couple, of, a couple of things here and there, including educational books, uh, the memoir. I have um, children's books, yes. 
Yeah. I'll be happy to share the details later with you if you might be interested. So thank you. Let's do this. Let's write more. Let's keep reading more. Let's keep writing more. And congratulations in advance. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. All the best. All the best with your writing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vera and uh, Douglas. For the both of them are authors, published authors. So um, I can imagine how challenged you are right now. And uh, you can reach out to them should you have any problem. And yeah, uh, the next person I'm going to invite is the, everybody has been saying the, their role model and so many nice things about them. So uh, Mr. Kinyanjui Kombani is here now and he's going to give you a word of encouragement and uh, a speech he prepared. So karibu sana Mr. Kinyanjui. Hello, hi everyone. Um, Good to see you once again. I know there are some people that we met last time when you were running the two sessions. Uh, by show of hands, who are the people that we met last time? I can see, I remember Jerry, I see Ed, Edward. Um, yeah, so I can see, I can see Doreen. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I actually don't have a speech because I only have two words, two words for us. And the two words that I have is the word that my mentor, has said over and over again. And these two words are, keep writing. And that is his mantra. So every time I write a book, every time I publish a book, I normally send it to him. His name is David Mulwa. Some of you may know him. Every time I have something new, I send it to him. And he tells me, congratulations. And the next thing he says is, what are you writing next? Because he's always been concerned that with many other things that we may think that, writing is is writing is like a destination but writing is not a destination writing is the journey uh, I've, I've written a couple of books and when i wrote my first book i did not think that i could write anything else because i had put everything in it and i knew that that was my ultimate book and after i wrote it i sent to him and he in fact it was not typed it was handwritten and he said this is a masterpiece you must have it published so it was published uh, it went on to become quite successful. After that, he kept pressurizing me. What are you doing? And the reason why he talks about keep writing is because the more you write, the more you become more comfortable. When I, when I wrote my first book, my first, the first, when I wrote my first book, I was actually using a dictionary when I was writing it because I wanted it to be the most difficult book because I knew that for your book to become successful, you must use the most difficult words. Uh, you must use all those, uh, all those things we learned in school, all those similes, all those proverbs. And that was the way the last villains of Molo was written. It was written, it took a lot of time to write. Now, if you've read the last villains of Molo, and if you read Of Pawns and Players, which is my latest book, yeah. you'll be surprised because of the, the way I have been much more simple in of pawns and players because i went for simplicity because now after writing so many times i've discovered that they they see what what um what somebody said is that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication if you can't if you are if you are 10 year old 12 year old uh 18 year old nephew or niece or daughter cannot read the story and make sense out of it then you're over complicating things so I, I learned that not by doing uh, doing many things, but by 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 read by reading and by writing. So that's why I keep saying keep writing. Second thing I will say also alongside that is the power of having two people in your mind, actually three people in your in your circles. So the first part is having a very good mentor. Uh, a mentor, the difference between a mentor and a coach and an accountability partner. So those are the three people that I feel that as writers, you need to have. And I'll show you my own examples. 
So I have five mentors because I, I want to grow in different capacities. I have a mentor for my career. I have my mentor, my mentor in the bank. I have my mentor in terms of life and also have a mentor in terms of writing. And the purpose of having a mentor is that a mentor is a person who has taken that journey. So they know that journey and they don't, they want to be able to help you, to handhold you to take that journey. So you take the journey with them uh, and you avoid some of the pitfalls that they have avoided in their life. So one of my mentors, my main mentor is a person who's been writing for over 40 years. He's read a lot and is, and is able to look at the bigger picture, not just my book, but how is my how is my journey going as a writer? How am I growing as a writer? And right now his challenge for me is not just to write books that make people happy, but also to make write books that make people uncomfortable. And his challenge to me has been, yes, you are doing well, you have a, books are very popular, you are selling a lot, but think about the big picture. How do you expand your territory to outside of Africa? Because you are, you're well known in Africa, but what about outside of Africa? And that's what a mentor should do. Another person should have on your side is also a coach. So a coach will necessarily not be walking the journey with you, but they'll help you de determine what exactly you want to achieve and how you'll achieve it. So for instance, a coach will, will look at, let's say my objective is, I want to be able to uh, write a 90,000 word in 2021. He's going to help me to really clarify that goal and make sure that the goal is smart. It is specific, measurable, um, achievable, realistic, and time bound. He'll help me to do that. And it also help me with the action plans that I will do. And that person you need in your life as a writer is an accountability partner. Uh, and let me give you my example of how uh, accountability work, partners work. So in my, in my case, I, start, I started the year with a plan that I'm going to write a novel. I even had a conversation with a publisher who told me, once you write this book, give it to us, we'll publish it. I like the synopsis, just write it. But I could not, and I know for a writer, that's a very, that's a very sweet uh, conversation to have because already the publisher is telling you, write, we'll publish. But believe it or not, between January and, and May, I could not write a single word. I could turn on my laptop, but I could not write a single word. And I'm sure you've seen this. So what I did is that I decided that I'm going to have a new set of accountability partners because I normally have one accountability partner called Cap Kiro, who is also a writer, but he was also not writing. So normally what we would do at the end of the day is to ask each other, how many words have you written and keep each other accountable. What I did this time is I decided to have a group, a WhatsApp group, where each person was able to in, just indicate how much they've, they've written that day. And, we, and each person had their own target of, let's say, 1,000 words, 500 words. And the fact that you have a team to report to, at the end of the day, you have a team that you will say, this is, the, this is how much I've done today. I was able to finish my manuscript by October. So October, not only did I do my target of 60,000 words, I was able to do a novel that is now 87,000 words. And that novel is, is ready. It was ready in October. But the fact that we agreed that we're going to do 1,000 words a day, and I kept at it. And every day, every day there was a report saying out of 70 people, 55 have done, have made their targets, 25 have not made their targets, and that kept us accountable. So, so, so as a writer, you need to have an accountability partner. They, they don't care what you write. Uh, they may not be writers, but they just want to hold you accountable at the end of the day and say, I, I want to. I want to see what we've done today and is it in line with what we agreed? And the second one is a coach, a coach to help you refine exactly what do you want to achieve and how do you plan to achieve and what are your options? What are the obstacles you need to see so that you can decide how do you make it happen? And the third one, which is more important, is actually a mentor. So uh, that's, and, and my, my, my story with my mentor is that when I was writing my book uh, of Pawns and Players, at some point I got stuck. I could not write again. And I went and had lunch with my mentor. And uh, my mentor just sat with me and helped me clarify the word. You know, the word, you know, there is, there is um, there's something that uh, a, a writer and speaker called Simon Sinek calls 
start with the why, starting with the why. You, before you do anything, you have to really be clear on why you are doing it. And, and what my mentor helped me was go back to help me go back to my thinking and reestablish my why. Why am I writing this book? Why am I writing this book? Because if you don't know your why, your what and your how will not work out. So uh, parting short, keep writing. The more you write, the more you get better. Uh, another parting shot, be sure that you surround yourself with mentors, with coaches, and accountability partners who may not necessarily be writers, but who will help you keep accountable for your actions. Over to you, Patricia. I'll, I'll post in case there's any question or any reaction to what I've said. Uh, if you have any question, you can actually send it to Kenyanjui here. Ask it and mute, ask the question. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement and for um, distilling it into those three people in the circle. Um, I wanted to ask how you found your mentor. Maybe I missed it and you've already said, but um, please uh, um, explain, tell us the story of how you found your mentor. Okay, so my mentor, I think it's important for me to say who my mentor is so that you, I can tell you how I found my mentor. So my mentor is called John C. Biokumu. He has, he has um, more than 40 years experience as a writer and a moderator. So it's somebody that I really admired from the word go. At first, it didn't start out as a mentorship. It didn't start out, it started, it didn't start out as a mentorship. In 2013, I, I organized an, an event for writers in Kenya. It was called the Authors Buffet, where authors were coming together and we were interacting with the audiences. And I called him and invited him to come. So we kept talking after that. And over time, it, it, it turned out into a, a formal mentor, a, moment, a more formal mentorship, um, mentorship um, relationship. But it didn't turn out, it, we didn't start by me telling him, I want you to be my mentor. Although I have had mentors who have actually reached out and told them, I want you to be my mentor, especially in my career, I've actually met some people and I told them I want to be a mentor. So how do you choose a mentor? First of all, choose a mentor who is going to be aligned to you, your area of where you want to be mentored. There are so many things that you can, you want to be mentored on. And, and sometimes you find that it's not easy to find one mentor who is all around so that you can have a mentor for your spiritual growth, uh, mentor for your career growth, mentor for your family growth, mentor for your fitness, for your health. So all those are mentors. And sometimes it's hard to find one mentor who fits everything. That's why I have five mentors because one mentor is not enough to fit all the, the, the whole circle of life. Um, so find a mentor who is a, an expert, who has gone through the journey that you want to go through it. If it's career, find a mentor who has gone through the same career journey so that he can help you to navigate through the journey and, and can help you see the big picture and avoid some of the, some of the things that you, you, you avoided, he, he, that he underwent. For instance, the people that I mentor, I, I, I help them. I don't necessarily provide solutions for them, but I look at the way where they are heading and I'm able to tell them this is what happened to me and therefore you can avoid this. For instance, one of the things that I help with my mentors, for instance, is most of most writers think that once you should give your publisher your manuscript and then if he says no, you take the manuscript and give it to another publisher. Now, on average, a publisher takes about three months to tell you whether they'll publish your book or not which can be a long time. So it means that by the time you get a publisher and you, you're probably going to be rejected about five times. So it means that by the time you get to know whether your book is ready, is okay to publish, it's about one and a half years. So my, my advice to my mentors is, don't give your manuscript to one, one publisher, give it to five publishers so that each one of them takes three months. Then in three months time, you will know whether your book will be published. So that is something that I have, um, I have knowledge of because of my journey as a writer. So choose a mentor who has gone through your journey. Uh, also choose a mentor where you can have more of a symbiotic relationship. So mentorship should not be a parasitic relationship. It should be symbiotic. You should also find something that you can give your mentor 
So there are many things that I am able to also support my mentor with. For instance, I am more digitally savvy than he is. Therefore, whenever it goes to how to do Zoom meetings, how to do, you know, things, digital things, um, he calls me and I'm able to also mentor. So that's called, it's called reverse mentoring. So th that's how you choose a mentor. Has that answered your question, uh, Jerry? Okay. Yes, in fact, I'm just fiercely taking notes because you dropped some more knowledge. <laughs> Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Especially so, about, so yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. So you have to choose a mentor who is going to be a symbiotic relationship. Don't don't just give, take, take, take. You should also give, 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 especially because mentorship is mostly voluntary. You can pay a coach, but most mentors will not want to be paid. Uh, they'll want it to be voluntary. So you also have to think about what am I going to give you in return? What is the need for you as a mentor? Yep. Okay, yep. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you very much, Mr. Kombani. For me, I don't have a question, but I just have a word of gratitude to you uh, for being with Writers Guild and holding Writers Guild hands all the way from 2015. Thank you so much for creating time always. You created time for the class, the very many programs that we have done together. And um, you give us confidence when we have you when we learn from your journey. Thank you so much for that. Maybe the, the fruits of the seeds that you plant in Writers Guild today may only be viable to be eaten maybe 10 years from now. So I believe may God give us time and chance to see the fruits when they are ripe. So thank you thank so you. much for, for the sacrifice and for the humility to be with us always. Thank you, Gabriel. And I also want to just in line with what you've just mentioned, yeah. Even when you're looking for a mentor, the mentor will participate in the mentorship by knowing what your passion is. So when 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 Gabriel uh, reached out to me, that was in two, was it two thousand and five? I think it was it was earlier than that. Yeah, uh, he reached out to me in twenty fifteen or earlier than that. I could see that he had a lot of passion for what he wanted, and it was a small outfit in Kenyatta University. So for somebody to just take their time and come to you and also walk the journey with you is because you've also shown, shown some passion. So for me, my, my mentors, and that's why whenever I have a book out, the first, normally the publisher gives you six copies free of charge. Uh, they're called the author's copies. Those author's copies, I always know who I'm going to take to because I want to show this mentor, these are the fruits of your, of your work. So you also need to show initiative for you to be mentored. It's not a one-way street. Yeah. So Gabriel has shown a lot of initiative and uh, that's why I'm happy to work with him uh, to take this uh, organization to the next level. Yeah. There seems to be no other question, Patricia. Thank you so much, Mr. Kinyanjui for creating yeah. time to come here. All the time you come here and you come with so much wisdom. Uh, I think one time Dr. Uh, Tom Odiambo said, you have so much wisdom that we, we have to start sharing. Yes. We'll make a session for only you. And then we can ask <laughs> all these questions and you'll be able to answer us. So yeah. I'm, I'm thank, you. thank you so much. I'm happy to thank do that. So My much. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. My, my parting shot for everyone is, uh, so you might see uh, Patricia may talk about my profile and, and, and you can actually get overwhelmed by seeing this person has published all this number of books and is go to all these places because of his writing. The only parting shot is that the only difference between me and you is time. When did I start writing and when have you started writing? So the only thing you just need to do is to keep at it, to keep writing. It's not going to be easy. Rejections are going to be the cause of the day. Even now, I still get rejections. But you see, you cannot be rejected if you didn't submit. You cannot submit if you've not written. So on a normal, on a, the books that I'm publishing right now, I wrote them in 2017. I, I had a, I had a, uh, I had a goal that I'm going to submit five manuscripts in 2017, and I submitted six. Now, those are the ones that are being published even right now. So you, you, for you to get published, you have to get rejected. It's, it's the order of the day. 
For you to get rejected, you have to have submitted something. For you to submit something, you need to have written something. So you need to, the only difference between me and you is time and persistence. So keep at it, keep writing, all the best everyone. I can see a question on the chat whether, whether I have a group of young writers. I don't have a group of young writers because I have the Writers Guild. So I work very closely with the Writers Guild. I support the uh, two of the, two of the, I, I actually facilitate two of the sessions. One is about understanding the publishing landscape. Another one is about how to, how to, uh, how to build your brand as a writer. As a writer, how do you build your brand? So, and I, I normally support in events such as this. So whenever you are with Writers Guild, you are with me. Okay, David, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Whenever you come to Writers Guild, you'll be able to find Kombani somewhere. Asante Sana. Uh, Gabriel, I'm going to give it over to you. Gabriel. Thank you, thank you very much all of us uh, for the time that we've had, uh, sparing time to graduate, and most of all, for the time that you uh, spared for the class. So we have had enough from the, our colleagues, our mentors, and the trustees of Writers Guild. So over to us, may we practice all these things. Uh, it is unfortunate that we are unable to hear from Ladan, Mr. Ladan, he was feeling unwell. You may pray for him and check on him after this. And also Harriet, uh, we were not able to hear from Harriet, but um, we are going to add you to the groups of incubates, the other writers who have graduated before you. So there are also other, other programs that we have together as incubates. One is called Alibad Breakfast, where we have a 30 minutes breakfast between 6.30 and 7 <laughs> on a Monday morning. It is Alibad, so it's meant for the Alibad. Eh? And then we also have others called Fireside Chat. We will do many more of these things. So welcome to the Incubate group today. After this, you will be referred to as an Incubate of Writers Guild. That is your official title. So you can actually introduce yourself as an Incubate of Writers Guild Kenya. And then uh, the graduation packages have been dispatched. A gentleman called Stephen will reach out to you uh, to deliver yours wherever you are. So uh, when you receive them, you, you, uh, we hope to hear from you just to say that you received them. So let's keep at it. Uh, may God be with you. And uh, at this point, I think I would wish to ask all of you to help me thank Patricia Molin Mataga eh, in a very special way a very, very special way. Patricia is the foundation of Writers Guild. Eh? She's the, uh, you know, in a, a house has the roof and then the foundation. The foundation holds the roof, the roof shines. And so people may only think the house is the roof. Mm -hmm. So the shining which Writers Guild has or is having the programs that we have are built on a foundation which revolves around Patricia. So I would wish to ask you, everyone who is here, to help me thank Patricia in a special way. You are mute and thank Patricia in your mother tongue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so you thank Patricia in your mother tongue and then, yeah, you may choose to explain. You can even say thank you, but uh, you know, say something a bit more than you explain to us what you say. <laughs> so Jerry, you have to thank Patricia in Kikuyu. Thank you, Mono. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which, which just sounds like the Kiku, well, sounds like the English, but you see how we've removed the N and it's just the G there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we we removed our N. In Chinese? In Chinese? Yes. <laughs> Patricia. That means very, very ah. grateful to you. Oh, <laughs> Brian even requested. Okay, Edward, yeah. Edward Obui. <laughs> it means thank you so much. <laughs> Asante. That, that's uh, kissy, that is kissy. Oh, that's kissy, eh? <laughs> well done. Yes, yes. Jocelyn. Let me come last. 
<laughs> okay, akini. <laughs> Akini. Okay, David, yes. David. Yes, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was saying ours is this international language. So, Erokamano Ahinya Patricia, it's Luo, a software. Call it everything, but we are so grateful. So, Erokamano Ahinya Wane Rekendo. <laughs> yes. Continue with the software. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> Patricia. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I just don't have words even to mention or say about you, but you're such a very uh, good person. And uh, whoever, I, I don't know whether to say this, but just allow me to say, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Whoever it is that you are, that is in your life, is a blessed person. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, we will keep on working together. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Brian Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay, Brian, we can, we are struggling to hear you, but thank you. Doreen? Uh, with my very, very poor Kalinjin. Gongoi chapter. You know, you know, Patricia is yeah. able to work. So if you are Kalinjin, <laughs> and you say good morning instead of thank you, Patricia will know that you are not. At least I'm sure I've said the right thing. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> okay. Um, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, now you may come. Yeah? Then we excuse the rest. <laughs> okay. Jocelyn? <laughs> My, my, uh, in lawyer, it's more of Kiswahili. Asante sana, Patricia. Ah, baba. Umechoma. Mwana imbe, emwana imbe. Ameban. Ameban. Actually, uh, but, but it's actually true. It's, okay, we have different... <laughs> okay, okay, we, we, we shall revisit. We will revisit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, Vera Bonareri, you'd also wish to bring in some bit of. Uh, yeah. Bona! <laughs> <laughs> Edward already took the trophy, but <laughs> Patricia. Uh, yes, I have. I think I have. Yes. yes I have. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm here. All right, what's going on? What happened? Uh, I also don't know what happened. I think it's the internet from the side. Excuse me, Gabriel. Can I thank him in Bukusu? <laughs> no, I, I beg to use my my, my boyfriend's language. 
Hey, hey Bole! <laughs> no, let, let me use my boyfriend's language. <laughs> Stue, <laughs> 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 Mwambieni kama amesikia aseme oye. Jocelyn ya crazy. Jocelyn uniku mechoma but sasa you have crazy again. Amezima, amezima. Sitaki sitaki bands offering. Thank you so much for this connection. So our our ceremony is done and thank you very much for your time. Anyone who can help us sing Christ, some Christmas song eh, before we go? Eunice. <laughs> yeah, anyone? It's Sabbath day, Eunice. Behave, Sabbath. <laughs> Imagine in our church there's no Christmas, so I can't relate. Oh, God. Gabriel, please take over. Gabriel. <laughs> Gabriel and David, I understand, I understand oh. they had a common unit in Rapogi to sing Christmas, so please. Oh, how do you, how, how do you sing Christmas? Oh, Gabriel? <laughs> Gabi, what is that? <laughs> yes, yes. Who, who is going to lead us? I, I can lead us in silent night. Is putting us to task. But, <laughs> yeah? I, can, I, can us to task. In, I can lead in We wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, oh perfect. Right. So let's start from Jerry. Then we go to Jocelyn. Yes. And then Jerry. the other person whose soul shall have been touched. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Jerry, over to you. Uh, uh, silent night, holy night, oh, oh, it's bright, crown yonder. <laughs> well, I, I think I let me let me revisit my my history. There's one we used to sing in my village uh, on Wachunga Wali Polinda. Okay, I don't know if you know that. But like it it goes like uh, the 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 way the shepherds kept the vigil and all that. So it's... okay. 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 Was it Malaika in plural? Okay, I'll start again. Okay, Wachunga Wali Polinda Pucha Yamangao Pansu Kufu Wali Shuka Kwao Wakao Gopa Wachunga 
of from a villain to to, to the victor yeah. <laughs> or to a the hero, hero. yeah uli chama bet to kianza but no akazima alizima ni mnoma yeah so the last one i love you mbe pamoja then we we can let you go for lunch i have remembered mine i have remembered mine my form one christmas song can i go Yes please. <laughs> so there was this one that we used to sing about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> so it went like this. Rudolph okay. the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose yeah. and if you ever saw it you didn't yeah. say it close so I'm singing the Christmas one. Then one foggy Christmas Eve Santa came to say Rudolph with your nose so bright want to guide my sleigh tonight so yes Rudolph is going to guide this christmas sleigh okay, so what is the less i think that was group of schools but anyway yeah. yes of course of course we can't relate okay. with rapogi now <laughs> okay so let's all see I wish you a merry christmas I wish you a merry christmas I wish I wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year Just just one more time just one more time I wish I wish you a merry christmas I wish, wish you a merry Christmas. Christmas. I wish you a merry Christmas. Christmas. And a happy new year. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye people. Excuse me, Gabriel. Bye. Bye. Excuse me, Gabriel. Oh. Yes. Yes, excuse me, please. Can I sing one more? Yeah. Yes. Can I sing one more? Yes. It is this one of Noel. Who knows that? I'll, I don't know the words very well, but I'll listen to your voice. I, I know the chorus. Let me do the chorus. Okay. No, it goes like this. No, well, no, well, no, well, no, well. Born is not king of Israel. We can all sing together that the chorus only. The birthday boy is here. He's here. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Oh wow, he's so cute. Yes. Yes, even walking Dorina up. 
Excellent. All of you are invited. Eh? Karibuni sana. Pin, pin location. Pin location, David. <laughs> 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 <laughs>